You ever get that feeling like the concrete jungle's closing in? You crave wide open spaces, the chance to chase your own dinner, or just breathe clean air. Well, listen up. There's a whole world out there waiting, and finding your piece of it just got easier. Head over to land.com. They've got ranches, forests, mountains, you name it. Search by acreage, price, location. They've got it all. No matter what kind of wild dream you're chasing, land.com can help you find the ground to make it a reality. So quit dreaming. Head over to land.com, find your open space, and get out there. Hey, it's Bobby Bones. Start building before next spring during Morton Building's winter windup. Save now until October 31st on select building projects. Visit mortonbuildings.com and then just click get started. Certain restrictions may apply. Contact your local construction center for more details. It's time to get inside the Giants' home. Let's go, let's go, let's go. On Giants.com. I like it, I like it, I like it. And the Giants mobile app. Dude, give me some juice. Part of the Giants podcast network. Let's roll. All right, so Gary Reasons, you played the better part of a decade with the Giants. Fortunately, two Super Bowl championships, which is actually great timing on your part. But you were part of such an incredible defense here. When you look back at it, can you even think about how good you guys were at the time? And did you realize it? Well, we knew we had something special. You know, it started out with us in 84 when, when myself and Carl came in kind of to help the defense along. And uh, we saw it right there on the, on the chalkboard. You know, Bill Belichick was doing a great job with our defense at the time. And with the tutelage of, of Coach Parcells, he was always pushing our buttons. And you knew that he could push the buttons the right way. You know, we grew together. And that was the biggest thing about our, our defense is that we, we, we relied on each other and we had a commitment to – to excellence, and that's, that's what, it, what it came down to. And, and we did it the right way. It was, a, it was a different style of football that we played back then, but we're very proud of how our defense uh, performed. I have often talked to Coach Bill Parcells about what is it to be a Parcells guy? Because all of you guys had to be Parcells guys to work under his system. What do you define as a Parcells guy, and why were you one of them? Uh, it came down to being selfless. You know, it's not about me, it's about we. Uh, and individually, you know, we, we were just a part of, of the process and part of the team. We all m- relied on each other because if, if one guy next to me kind of misstep, you know, you know that, that hurt our defense. And so we were all very coordinated and we had our, our job and we basically had our things that we had to do to, to, to do a, be a successful defense. And we accomplished those. And so we relied on each other, the, t- the commitment to team, and, and basically we all understood what we were trying to uh, accomplish and we were physical tough all those things that you think about in Giants defense uh, you know we kind of put together and it it really really came together for several years in a very very positive way and I was was proud to be a part of it fourth round draft pick when you came in and the team was already on the upswing as a postseason team how difficult was it to find your niche to blend in and to show these guys that hey I belong well, for me, it was easy because I had played in a 3-4 defense my entire high school and collegiate career. So I really had a pretty good understanding of, of the scheme of the defense. And then from there, it's just it's just excelling and trying to be able to be a part of uh, all plays as a defensive player, a linebacker. We have two words that are written on our linebacker on our wall, relentless pursuit. And that's what it come down to. You have to have that mentality as a defensive player, never give up, never yield, always being relentless in pursuit of the football. And that's kind of how we played. And that was that was instilled in us and didn't hurt that we had some special players around us. For sure. Super Bowl 21 and Super Bowl 25, the two rings that Gary owns. Do you often look back at those at all? You pop the, the tape in the VCR because they were tapes in those days. They weren't like links, okay? And and which one do you look at more fondly? I tell you, when when you look back in the, the context of how our team developed, I look at the 1986 season as a culmination of 1984, the new draft. Carl and I came in as our with our defense. 85, we excelled. Harry was still uh, doing playing very well, and Lawrence, well, Superman was there with us. So good to have that. But we had an ascension to the National Football League on our on our as our football team and even on our defense, and it was really special. And for me, the uh, the understanding of the Giants fans, how we they had not been very successful the previous 10, 10 11 years. And now we had some success in 84, 85, and 86 was the year. And the biggest moment for me ever, I think, is, is really the NFC Championship game here at Giant Stadium where we had to beat the Washington football team three consecutive seasons, three mm-hmm. consecutive times that year, and we did it. And, and it was electric in that stadium, and you could actually you know, cut it with a knife. It was palpable because uh, we, we, we felt all the energy of the fans and the confetti and the, the wind and everything that happened in that game. That was so special to be a part of. 
And then we were on cloud nine when we went, 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 went to play in, in the Super Bowl, and it's just another game to us. And we put that on, on the board to win it, and, and we got it done. You're ready for a change. Payday comes early with citizens, so go to that retreat. New you moves to the country. Now you're raising goats and launching a lifestyle brand. Are you ready for all that life brings? You ever get that feeling like the concrete jungles closing in? You crave wide open spaces, the chance to chase your own dinner, or just breathe clean air. Well, listen up. There's a whole world out there waiting, and finding your piece of it just got easier. Head over to land.com. They've got ranches, forests, mountains, you name it. Search by acreage, price, location. They've got it all. No matter what kind of wild dream you're chasing, land.com can help you find the ground to make it a reality. So quit dreaming. Head over to land.com, find your open space, and get out there. Yeah, I tell people all the time, even though the Super Bowl is the Super Bowl and the first one, the win against the Broncos is awesome, it was that Redskins playoff game, the then Redskins, that to me typifies what that team was, the way you totally shut them down and Parcells, of course, played the win. Uh, exactly. You know, that stadium had our, our name on it, the Giants. And when you came in there, uh, it was tough sledding. And that's what we meant, wanted to have happen for, for any football team that came in there. And, you know, Washington was a great football team back then in the same era. They had, had some success. But, you know, it was, it was our season. We had culminated from two, two great seasons, 84, 85, and 86 was going to be that year. And it just all came together in, in, in a great and a very, very positive way. Uh, I love the leadership Parcells with his with his ability to communicate with players and get the most out of each and every one of us. Mm -hmm. All of us had our nuances that he wanted to, to build in there. Our defensive staff was tremendous, and obviously Bill Belichick had a big part of that. And we had a, a great uh, you know great camaraderie in the locker room. Everybody got to came together, and it was like a family. And we still are family today, which is really special. You know, I remember that Bill Parcells used to say all the time, Phil Sims wasn't a quarterback; he was a football player. You guys, as tough, rugged defensive players, how much confidence and how much did it jack you guys up to know that the quarterback on the offense was probably as rugged as you guys were on defense? Yeah, just think about it. Phil Sims probably could have played linebacker. You know, he had a body build that was kind of a, a linebacker style body, and uh, but he was throwing that football and he did it well. And he understood his context of what he wanted to do within the offense or what he was tasked to do maintain control of the football, don't put us in a bad situation, and then execute when given the opportunity. And that's what Phil did, and he, he had a great run. Previous to me coming to the Giants in 84, Phil had had several years where he was often injured. And so we were wondering, was Phil going to be on the field? Well, from 1984 into the 1990 season, where we won Super Bowl 25, Phil was seemingly indestructible. So he, he was out there continually in, in that stretch, and we saw the greatness that he had, and he played within himself, and he played with the tools that he had. Great leader, great great guy executing, and uh, you know he led us to victory. And you know he's, he was a big part of our Super Bowl 25 championship, although he wasn't in the game, uh, and Jeff had to finish off the season. We had a, we had a great uh, respect for Phil and what he did for us uh, you know, for many seasons. We talked about Bill Parcells during this interview, but Bill Belichick needs to get mentioned as well. How much did you think he was going to have a chance to become a head coach in this league? Did you know then? Yeah, you could see it pretty easily that Bill had an opportunity to – to lead people in a different way. He's very different than Bill Parcells, as, as, as everybody has seen post, uh, post his time with the Giants. So, But he, he did things in his way. And Bill was a guy who never left any stone unturned. Mm -hmm. uh, he did not want to have an, a, something that would come up in any game. He wanted to have seen that, experienced it, and then and really translated that to us, to the players, so that when we stepped on the field, if something happened in a game, it wasn't the first time we had seen that. Most of the time we had that accomplished, so we had some level of expectation of what a team may try to do to us uh, on, the, on the offensive side of the ball, and we would then counter something defensively or at least be prepared for it. So being prepared, I think, is the biggest takeaway that I ever have from, from Bill Belichick, the preparedness of how he approached the game, and he instilled that in us, and I think that is, is a great takeaway from, for me for, for the rest of my life. So the fans, whenever they hear the words Gary Reasons, they talk about the tackle in Denver, which is a photo that made the Pro Football Hall of Fame that year, or they talk about the fake punt. From your perspective, which one are you more relishing over the years as time goes by? Well, to hear John Madden and Pat Summerall call the series in, in Denver in 1989, which was really uh, kind of a kind of an aw, aw shucks moment, you know, for me, it's like, wow, you know, and, 
And then that play on the goal line, it was it was special. It was tremendous, you know, for me. You know, I knew kind of knew as John took the snap and how he stepped, I knew what the play was going to be. And so mm -hmm. I, I just then executed what I had been trained to do and prepared to do, and, and it all worked out. Uh, but I do think, to answer your question, the fake punt in San Francisco in the NFC Championship game, we needed that type of a play yeah. to get us back into the swing of things. And Matt Barr uh, filled in uh, respectfully in what he needed to do. You got a couple of field goals there, on one on that drive and then one the subsequent drive to, to put us over the top. So, I, man, I, I have to say that the, the NFC Championship game, the fake punt, is probably my biggest contribution in a single play to the history of the New York Giants. Yeah, now I've heard many times from your teammates that that was your call, right? Bill Parcells let you make that call in Candlestick. Well, you know, it was all the only, you know, it was me, it was an audible on the field. And basically, Bill, I I, I checked the, the the team every time we go out there on the punt formation, and we knew we had a fake punt in the, in the game plan, and it was just a matter of whether or not we would use it. So w the first punt we went out there, they, the 49ers were still doing the same punt returns uh, stand. So I tell Bill, I said, Bill, it's there if we need it. And he just shakes his head. And so I'm in, in late in the game, you know, I run by him on the field and he's got his arms folded and he's yelled at my back, you know, just run it if it's there. And literally I, I saw uh, a really unique thing in that not only did it was that they were still set up in the right formation, the right situation, but they were only had 10 players on the field. Right. And where I was going to run, that was the player who did not <laughs> show up. So it actually was a pretty gaping hole, and thank goodness for me. You know, I'm not, I'm not a skilled running back. I used to have, be running back in high school days, but my, th those days were, were gone. But for me to get through there and have a chance to do that, that was a, the biggest moment for me to, to have in that and being able to audible to it. Uh, it was loud. There was a couple of guys up there that did not hear the audible, right. but the ones that needed to did. Steve and, and the in, inside and guy. And Vendetta didn't know. Yeah, Sean's like, well, whatever. <laughs> There's a lot of things that Sean didn't remember, but that's okay. <laughs> Just teasing. Good. But it was, it, was a great, uh, it was a great opportunity to help, uh, help our team and um, kind of put us in a, in a great situation to come back at the end of the, end of the game and win, the, win that one. You love turf. You're good at it. So you start a turf biz. Business grows. Your savings grow. Become the most celebrated name in turf. Are you ready for all that life brings? You ever get the feeling the city walls closing in, the concrete jungle suffocating your soul? You crave wide open spaces, the chance to connect with nature, maybe chase some elk, fish a private stream. Well, listen up. There's a whole world out there, and finding your own piece of it just got easier. Head over to land.com. They've got ranches, forests, mountains, you name it. Search by acreage, location, the kind of hunting or fishing you dream of. Land.com. It's where the adventure begins. All right, let's take you to today. You're a linebacker, and we all know the Giants tradition of linebackers, but today's game seems to be more emphasis on the edge rushers and the defensive tackles, more so than the linebackers. Does that bother you when you see it? And how, how can the Giants become a great team now with a, more of an emphasis on the front? Yeah, the linebacker play that they look for today on the inside linebackers and even the guys who are off the ball, it's really more, in our, in our era, more of strong safety play. Uh, you know, they're smaller, they're not, not as large as we were. We were all 6'4", 250, okay, all of us. Mm -hmm. You know, back then, we had a linebacker room that was huge, and that's not the case today. They're, they're, they're really going to be in the 220 range, 6'2", 6'3". You can, they can really, really run, and that's what they're putting a premium on because today's game has turned into, rules-wise, in the NFL, there's more opportunity for the, NFL, for the offenses to succeed because of the no-contact rules and some right. of the things that are, that are in place there. And so, what do you have to do as a defense? You've got to then counter with, you've got to have specialty guys, defensive edge rushers and interior players that can really have a motor and get back there and defeat offensive linemen and get back to the quarterback. That's why there's a premium there on those players and not so much for the, for the linebackers because those guys are in between. The linebackers are a little more gifted than we were as, as inside linebackers to be able to run and run with not only uh, running backs, but with wide receivers and, and, and crossing things across the, the field. 
Um, so it's a little bit of a different scheme of how they play today. And really the rules have just perpetuated this to be a, a, a different style of defense that needs to be played. So now you're doing a lot of work with FCS college football. Of course, you were an FCS in those days, one double A guy when you came out of school. So I know that's that's got to be a proud thing for you, but also to be coming back here to Giants training camp and wearing the Legends community shirt. And, and if the Giants can restore the kind of pride and championship caliber of football that they want to do, it's going to probably make you guys feel very, very good about getting back to that. Well, this is a family. This is a community of, of players that uh, once you're a giant, always a giant. We know Wellington Mara, you know, that, that he instilled that in this in this franchise. And um, it, it really has taken heart. Everybody who comes through those doors now understands what they're coming to. A very proud, tradition rich uh, franchise that is history laden with, with championships and excellence. Uh, that is really what is the foundation here. And for me to come back and be some small part of whatever is going on forward, is, uh, is great. I'm uh, going to be back here in, in early September for the top 100 announcement. That's going to be pretty fun and pretty cool to be a, be a part of that ceremony. It's, uh, th there's, some, there's some really cool things to be a part of this franchise and you know, what all it means uh, in the big, big picture of things. And I see I'm here at training camp. We're seeing all these fans around here. Wow, this has grown to a spectacle, yeah. and it is, uh, it's tremendous to see. Yeah, reasons it's a long way from the days at Pace and FDU Madison and Albany. Uh, this is quite an outfit here, and we're certainly glad to see you back here. Two-time Super Bowl champ Gary Reasons. Thank you. You bet. You ever get the feeling the city walls closing in, the concrete jungle suffocating your soul? You crave wide open spaces, the chance to connect with nature, maybe chase some elk, fish a private stream. Well, listen up. There's a whole world out there, and finding your own piece of it just got easier. Head over to land.com. They've got ranches, forests, mountains, you name it. Search by acreage, location, the kind of hunting or fishing you dream of. Land.com. It's where the adventure begins. Hey, it's Bobby Bones. Start building before next spring during Morton Building's winter windup. Save now until October 31st on select building projects. Visit mortonbuildings.com and then just click get started. Certain restrictions may apply. Contact your local construction center for more details.